Hi, it's David from Life with Parkinson's. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And to everyone else, thank you for your support and coming back to watch another episode. I got to tell you, this is the most anticipated episode I've ever had, the most requests and messages I've had about. So I'm really excited to get going. We're going to hear from a viewer who's just going to share his experience with the Parkinson's gloves. And then after that, I will share what my six month update is. So we have a lot of ground to cover. Let's get right at it. Hello, my name is Donald. And today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of uh, my homemade vibrotactile gloves that uh, I put together with information from uh, several sources, including GitHub and the PD buzzboard sites. This is what I come up with. This is my controller, the Arduino unit. Put it in this little clear plastic case. Well, it's actually a food storage container, but the battery and the board is in there. And over here I have the little switch. Turn it on, you can see the green light comes on. You can tell if it's working. You can also see the status lights on the battery charge. I have the USB charger here. So it keeps everything nice and neat and tidy in one place. Gloves are comfortable, flexible, and these are based on a just a mechanics glove, I guess you call them. They got a little Velcro strap. They're flexible material. They're kind of like a foam material. And what I've done is I've just encapsulated these motors, vibration motors inside the shrink tube on the end. So when you put your hand in the glove, your fingertip goes right into the little cup there. And then uh, just slide it back in the, in the glove. And I've got these little jacks here. These are little disconnect jacks. And they're numbered one through four, according to your fingers. And if you have one of these that goes bad or stops working, you just unplug it and uh, keep a spare, a bunch of spares on hand, just replace them as needed. And the uh, parts consist of, these are the lighting, This is these are LED lighting connectors, but they work for our application here. The motors I'm using are the Tataco 12,000 RPM motors. These have long leads on them. I've also found that these give you the best vibration. It seems to be better than some of the other ones. And how I do this, I solder the motor onto the, to the lead, disconnect lead. And I take a piece of solid wire. This is 20 gauge solid copper wire. You cut a piece and you make, I guess, what you would call a lasso. And you want to lasso the motor with that. Slide it into one of these pieces of shrink tube. And you put the motor in there. Stick it in the shrink tube. Heat it up with your trusty heat gun and fold it over onto your finger and that wire helps hold the uh, shape that you need. And so the shrink tube I use, I found the best stuff here is this 3M FP301. It's flexible, it's, but it's, it's uh, easy to work, it's easy to work with. It's, you know, it doesn't, doesn't irritate your fingers. So this is the best stuff I've found. And uh, the other thing I, I'm using, if you noticed on these gloves, is a Cat5 cable. Cat5 cable has four pairs of wires in it. They're color-coded. Match up your fingers. I made a little color chart that I use. Orange, blue, brown, green. One for each finger. Number them. Keep track of what finger is 
going to what number and it seems to work out pretty good and uh, what I've done on these I've taken a little zip tie and another piece of the 3M product to cover all the joints up there's solder joints under here I've soldered the cat5 cable pairs onto the disconnect jacks and a good good thing to use if you're going to do a lot of soldering if you're going to do soldering on these type of small wires get a solder pot this one here cost me under twenty dollars gives you really good solder joints the other thing i found when dealing with these little tiny wires especially ones in the motors if you heat the wires up with your heat gun just a second or two before you strip the wire off everything it comes off a lot easier and these containers that I use for the controller, you can buy these at any grocery store. They're about five bucks. I drill a hole in the end of the box using a cone bit or a step bit and a cable connector. This is a three quarter inch cable connector. It's large enough in internal diameter here that you can slide the jacks and various end pieces of the cable through there with plenty of room and when you get everything in place you just tighten them all down keeps everything nice and neat and tidy and I've been this is about the uh, I've been wearing these for about six months I was diagnosed with PD three years ago and I've seen great results I've also made some of these for uh, made these glove sets up for some of my friend PD friends that I work out with and they've also seen some good results uh, nothing miraculous, but uh, I've been wearing mine for six months. I'm going to continue to wear them. So that's my take on homemade gloves, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Donald, for sharing that information in your video. And then he sent an email and went on further to say, I just wanted to update you on my glove therapy. I started using the glove in May of 2023, four hours a day. I reduced the time to two hours a day after six months, and now in January, I am going part-time using the gloves one hour every three days. The main reason is that I was actually experiencing the glove overdose. My muscles were getting stiff after my glove sessions. When I cut back on the time, my stiffness subsided. I still have the same good effects, which for me are better sleep and more energy, less aches and pains, less tremors, and improved sense of smell. Thank you. So thank you so much, Donald, for sharing that with us. That is just absolutely wonderful. I am glad to hear you are having good results. In my experience so far, when I look back about a year ago, when Trevor and I started on version one of the gloves, version two of the gloves, now on version three, and I've had some success the last six months, and just something to keep in the back of your head as you're going through this, my main symptoms for Parkinson's are mainly slowness and stiffness. I don't really get a lot of tremors. My results with version 3.0 have been very good. They have managed to completely replace my dopamine agonist, Movapo, and they've done it very, very well. But I haven't been able to reduce my amount of levodopa that I take at all. And I did check my prescription before this video I've been on the same levodopa dose for about, gosh, a year or two now without any changes, but I have moved things around a little bit. I know others have been able to reduce their L-dopa, but in my case, I haven't been able to. But when you think about it, on the other hand, I was in quite a bad spot. So to have a homemade technology built for Parkinson's, like in the home, do that much work? to me is very surprising. When I have tried to reduce my L-DOPA a little bit, my brain gets very unhappy and has always put me in some really bad off state, so I've just given up on that. But something that I've come across is overstimulation, like an overdose problem. When Trevor and I built these sets of gloves, we did make two pair just in case one went down and needed repairs. We've only lost two motors in the last six months, so the repairs have been quite minimal. That being said, with two different sets of gloves, they all had identical parts, but the two control boards seem to put out two different 
levels of signal. One was quite stronger, so it produced a stronger vibration, and one was quite a bit weaker. So I was like, well, I'm going to use a stronger one because I'm going to get quicker results from that. And I did, but I started to have some dystonia-like symptoms and some like overdose of levodopa symptoms where I would get quite nauseous after using the gloves for a time. Uh, I would also get quite dyskinetic. And then I started to have dystonia symptoms, very painful dystonia symptoms, like my you know, my fingers would all go into weird positions and I couldn't straighten them, couldn't pull my fingers apart. It was very painful. And then I started to get this jaw clenching symptom that I still have. And it hurt so much and it makes me slam my jaw shut and just grind my teeth. And I actually broke a feeling it was becoming so violent. And then thankfully I got some help from another viewer who suggested, hey Dave, I think you're overstimulating. And it turned out that I was. So I started at four hours per day, two hours twice a day. And now with all the adjustments I've made, I'm down to 45 minutes in the evening and then an hour to an hour and a quarter in the morning. And that's about all I can handle right now. And that just keeps me just on the edge of overdose. But it also keeps my symptoms basically on the edge of overtaking the gloves. So I've had to give up some on time around my levodopa doses, which I'm not super happy about. But on the other hand, this is a homemade medical device. For, for what it's doing, it's pretty darn good. I am going to look for something to fill that gap. But what I've done is I've increased my red light therapy because the red light therapy does help with the dystonia whereas the gloves don't really respond well to it. They just seem to aggravate it and make it worse. So I've pushed my red light therapy sessions as close to the glove times as I can. And between the two, for me, it seems to create a good balance. Okay, are the results good or bad? And this, kind of, this section is kind of in my own opinion because I think everyone's going to react a little bit differently. So if you disagree, leave me a comment and we can always chat about it. I would say the results exceeded expectations for me, but it comes with a big caution. Running into these overstimulation symptoms can be very frustrating because you dial back your time and then the symptoms come back because they were masked by the gloves. So finding that balance can be very frustrating. Also, building a set of gloves that work and provide the therapy that you need can also be a challenge because there's nobody out there who can sell these. And there's like, they come with no warranty, they come with no help from your doctor. So there are a lot of things to think about before committing to this and, and putting yourself out there like that. I just feel that we need to manage our expectations about this technology. This is not the silver bullet we're looking for. This is not going to solve all of our Parkinson's problems. I think it's a valuable tool in the tool belt because it's easy to make, it's not a whole lot expensive, and the amount of good it's done for me is really positive. But it's not going to handle all of our symptoms because in the background, when all these symptoms are masked, the disease is still pressing forward, right? The disease is still advancing. So for me, it's almost been a year, but now with the reduction due to overstimulation, I can kind of feel the symptoms creeping back. So I'm going to need to fill that void with something. So it's just, we have to be careful to manage our expectations about a homemade medical device. I just want to bring up these points so you get all the information and you get all the different sides to consider. There's a big pros and cons list here that I necessarily didn't go through when I started this project with Trevor. So thank you for continuing to take this journey together. Leave a comment or a question below. Let us know how your glove experience has gone. Have a good day. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.